This week, we're going to take a little trip to one of my favorite Oklahoma historical markers. Welcome to Blog Oklahoma. Back during the summer of 2006, our family decided to take a short excursion through western Oklahoma. Besides having a fun family afternoon drive and enjoyable picnic by an area lake, we set out to find a few historic places north of Cheyenne, Oklahoma. During this trip, we came across a historical marker on U.S. Highway 283 in basically the middle of nowhere between Cheyenne and Arnett, Oklahoma. This lonely green metal sign has become my favorite Oklahoma historical marker. The picture I took of it that day has become the signature image I use over at the Exploring Oklahoma History website to represent, well, exploring Oklahoma history. <laughs> the reason I love this marker is not really for the history it represents, even though it's quite fascinating. In the large scope of Oklahoma history, it's kind of a minor footnote. Why I love this marker is, for one, I discovered it with my family, so that's a precious memory. This marker's location to me is a wonderful representation of Oklahoma, or at least the western half of it. <laughs> uh, with the exception of the occasional pickup driving by, it's quiet there. It's just you, the marker, the wind, and nature itself. The marker sits on the western side of the highway next to a plowed field. The other side of the highway is pasture land. Three of Oklahoma's major industries are represented in this area. Farming, ranching, and energy. Along this long stretch of lonely highway, you're going to see fields of wheat, herds of grazing cattle, and tank batteries and pump jacks scattered across the rolling hills. And in this general area, you're going to see great examples of us using, using uh, one of Oklahoma's greatest natural resources, its wind. From lone old windmills pumping water for cattle, to fields of tall white turbines generating electricity. You can use this historical marker as a starting point to explore Oklahoma history. To the west of this marker, you're going to see one of the area's landmarks the Antelope Hills. And just beyond that is the 100th Meridian, that imaginary line in the dust that runs from the Red River to the south all the way up to the Oklahoma Panhandle in the north. And this line separates Oklahoma from our neighbor Texas. To the north of our historical marker is the town of Arnett with their historic courthouse. A little bit further north of there is Shattuck with their great windmill museum. Traveling east of Arnett toward Visai, you'll find the wonderful historic marker noting the uh, Great Western Cattle Trail. Go a little bit further north of there and you're going to be in Woodward with their highly recommended Plains Indians and Pioneer Museum. And a little bit north of there, you're going to be in Boiling Springs State Park, a real jewel in northwest Oklahoma. To the south of our historical marker is the town of Cheyenne with their nice city park and museum complex where you can see a one-room schoolhouse. To the west of there is the Washita Battlefield National Historic Site where you can learn about Lieutenant Colonel George A. Custer's attack on a southern Cheyenne village. To the east of Cheyenne, you'll journey to my hometown of Elk City where you can see the National Route 66 Museum and Old Town Complex. And that's just some of the Oklahoma history you can experience from our historical marker. Now you might be wondering what historical marker I'm talking about. It's Grand, and a very fitting name. The Grand Historical Marker reads, and please excuse the uh, broken English on this marker, <laughs> site about four miles northwest on November 13, 1892, 
Grand was established as county seat of Day County, Oklahoma Territory. This was County E at the opening of Cheyenne and Arapahoe lands April 19, 1892. Day County and county seat were abolished at statehood in 1907. Many citizens of Grand became noted leaders in the new state of Oklahoma. Well, there you have it. My favorite historical marker denotes a ghost town. <laughs> the town of Grand no longer exists except in memory, and it's a grand memory. <laughs> if you'd like to know more about this and the other Oklahoma historic places I mentioned, please visit our other website of Exploring Oklahoma History at blogoklahoma.us. That's at blogoklahoma.us. And I want to thank you for taking this trip with me in Oklahoma history. Sorry for the little break after the uh, last episode. I completely spaced on that uh, I was going to go on vacation, you know, on actual vacation. Not sure how I forgot that, but I did. <laughs> I actually went on vacation, you know, time off work, sleeping in, doing nothing. It was awesome! <laughs> oh, well, vacation's over. It's back to work, and it's back to our regular podcasting schedule from now on. <laughs> Oh, have some great news. For those of you with a Roku, um, if you're not familiar with a Roku, it's a small, inexpensive internet device. You attach to your TV. It lets you watch Netflix and Hulu and Amazon and Google and MLB TV and thousands of other things, including now the Blog Oklahoma podcast. We were approved for the channel store just Friday. Woohoo! So now you just head on to streaming channels. If you go to... Uh, Special interest, you'll find us listing there uh, under that category. You know, or for the next few days, you're probably going to find us under new, so you can install us from there. And you could still install our channel from the website. Just go to blogoklahoma.net slash Roku. Click the big blue button, and you can install our channel from there. Uh, for those of you who have had our uh, private channel installed this entire time, you can continue to use it. It's the exact same channel. Uh, but if you would, uh, when you think about it, switch on over to our public channel. Because if I ever do make an update, no plans right now, but if I do need to make an update, I'm going to update the public, public channel first. So there you have it. We're now listed in Roku publicly, and hopefully you enjoy it and you keep enjoying this podcast. This week's Blog Oklahoma writing suggestion is... Write an article about your favorite Oklahoma historic place. And if you wouldn't mind, please don't forget to share your article with everyone with the hashtag blog Oklahoma so that we can all read it. I look forward to see what you come up with. Are you someone who blogs in or about Oklahoma? Then you already qualify for WebRing membership. Join Blog Oklahoma today. Want to know more about Blog Oklahoma? Then just explore the web ring and discover some of the best blogs and podcasts in the nation. Just visit blogoklahoma.com for more information. Did you know we have our own Cafe Press store? Of course you do. You've been listening this whole time. But if you're new here, hey, we have our own Cafe Press store. There you can purchase a t-shirt, coffee mug, and other great items with the Blog Oklahoma podcast artwork on them. So please just head on over to cafepress.com slash podcast. I've added even more great music to the Blog Oklahoma bonus playlist. There is now well over 10 hours of music for you to enjoy. You can listen to the playlist on Spotify and on YouTube. I have links to them and more in the show notes at blogoklahoma.net. And thank you for listening to the Blog Oklahoma podcast. I'm happy to announce as of July 24th, 2016, Blog Oklahoma has... 905 registered Oklahoma bloggers. Hooray! Your feedback is important, so please feel free to contact me with your comments or questions. You can get hold of me in a multitude of ways. Just visit blogoklahoma.net slash contact for more information. Check our show notes for all the links and bonus material from today's episode. 
This has been Kevin Latham for Blog Oklahoma. Until next time.